day, another Friday. We are still in the year of our Lord, 2019, the month of November. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited because, you see, each time God is going to do something, He really will give you a hint. Anyway, welcome to all our viewers. Uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube view viewers you are all over the world, you are very much welcome. And thank you for um, pressing in and keeping up with the good works. Share, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. But above all, apply the word to your life and to your situation. Hallelujah. Amen. We are part of the solution. God is working through us and with us to touch the world. And we bless Him for that. What a privilege. What a blessing. All right. So God is up to something. And it takes people who are positioned, people who are in the know, or people who have understanding of where God is and what He's about to do to receive. Hallelujah. Whenever God is going to do something, it just doesn't happen. It does it through men. Through our scripture, we've seen that. Hallelujah. He rescued the people of Israel through Gideon. And I can go on and on. He, took, uh, he used a, a Moses to just deliver the people out of bondage in the land of Egypt. Yes. Hallelujah. He took a Joseph to save people from famine in the land of Egypt. And we can go on and on. But he took his one and only son Jesus Christ, to deliver you and I from uh, bondage and from sin and to bring us to a place of sonship. I'm excited. And I don't want anybody to miss out on what God is going to do. What He's going to do is global. What He's going to do is massive. But it's going to start with His church. He's going to minister to His church. We are going to see things that we haven't seen before. Some of the things that we are going to see is like, oh, we read this in the Bible. Oh, well, we didn't know that it can happen to us. It's going to happen. And we are going to see God use lay people. Amen. God using not just ministers, but using every child of God who is positioned well, who is equipped, you know, in a mighty way where miracles are supernatural. I can say, hallelujah. So I want to read from 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 5, we all know this, so I don't have to talk about it, but let me just touch a bit on it. You also, as lively stones, or living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer our spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We, we are the house, we are the tabernacle, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's a done deal. God is not going to change his mind about that. That is what he has done. And uh, we are not just a tabernacle like it happened in those days in the Old Testament that he had a structure that was just standing and people used to go in there to have um, their what, ceremonies or rituals or to meet with God and what have you. But this is a moving sanctuary. It's a mobile world, temple. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, God was, as it were, stationary in one place, in a box. This time, it's not in a box. The wisdom is this. Wisdom. And we are going to be talking about wisdom. And I'm giving you a portion of it. The wisdom of this is God to be everywhere, physically, naturally, at the same time, to touch every life that he wants to touch through his church. His presence being everywhere, His glory being everywhere at the same time to minister to those that He wants to minister to. The Bible says that the knowledge um, of uh, His glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea in these last days. We are in the last days. It began on the day of Pentecost when the church was born, when they received the promise of the Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are in the last days. That is why we see so many things going on. And people talk about all the atrocities. They talk about all the menace. They talk about all the wickedness and, you know, how things are in a decline. But I want to say this. You know, Bible forewarns us that we are going to be in these times. Where people are going to be truth breakers, covenant breakers, haters of, uh, what do you call it, uh, God, lovers of pleasure, lovers of uh, themselves, lovers of what, what have you. Bible, Jesus himself talked about that, that in the last days, 
we shall see this as people, even the very elect, if they are not standing well, can be deceived. The Bible talked about that. Isaiah said, there is darkness upon the people, seek darkness upon the people. But the glory of the Lord is risen upon us, the church. Hallelujah. As much as we see darkness on the rise, we are going to see even the arising of light supersede that of the rise of darkness. In these times of darkness, that's when the church will arise and the church will demonstrate the love and the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be happening. Amen. Because it happened in the early church. They were in darkness all around them, but yet God moved through the church, His people. God doesn't move in a vacuum. He moves through His people. He's demonstrated that throughout the years, throughout the ages, Amen. and that is where we are now. It's just our turn that is what is unique. Amen. Hallelujah. But God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he has done in times past, we are going to see these same things happen. Through ordinary people, sanctified, washed by the blood, groomed by the Holy Spirit, equipped by the word of God Amen. for signs and for wonders. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It was said of the disciples, oh, these people have been with the Lord. They were with the Lord indeed. And they saw something about them. In the same way, the world will see something about the church. The people who are positioned. Hallelujah. According to the word of the Lord. People who are in sync with the mind of the Lord. People who have aligned their spirit, soul, and bodies to the Lord. Like the Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Romans chapter 12, 1. And what? Don't what? Conform to this world. Do not conform to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Hallelujah. And as we do that, we are positioning ourselves. Amen. In verse 6, we are still in 1 Peter 2, verse 6. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. That is the word of God. Amen. The times... When people will be crying, where is your God? Or be asking, where is your God? I saw you claim you're a believer. You profess to be a child of God. Why this? Why that? Those days are over. Because the knowledge of the Lord is now on the increase. Amen. The people of God are being equipped. They have understanding of the times. And they have understanding of their God. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who... Who are disobedient, I mean verse 7. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And it says, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. This is what I normally tell people. That the word itself, the word itself is an offense to those who choose not to believe. If you want to believe, it's no offense. But those who choose to disbelieve or disobey, that becomes an offense. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we talk about the word, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nine says something interesting. But you are a chosen generation, referring to the church, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own royal people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are chosen. So you are not a mistake. You are no accident. Yeah. You are not just here to occupy space. You are not just here to go through time. You are here because of a divine word. Mandate. You are here because of a divine word. Assignment. Mandate. Hallelujah. So you are chosen by God. In, uh, in um, uh, John chapter 15, he said that you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, priesthood. Royal priesthood. Holy word. Nation. If you have doubts about your holiness, it's over. You see, that is one of the areas that the enemy uses, you know, to come against us um, so far as our work with the Lord is concerned. Look at what Siri is doing. He's listening in. Good for you. You're going to listen to that. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> you know, at times people feel they are not holy enough to be used by God. I have news for you. If genuinely, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, where the Bible says, 
If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then says, for with what? Your heart must believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you genuinely did this, you are saved. You are holy. He declared you holy. He declared you justified. Amen. That's it. He declared you righteous. Amen. Period. You can't be any more holy. You are holy. That is why he lives in you. If genuinely you are subject, John chapter 3, 16, where the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you genuinely believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, that the Lord, the Creator, sent to this world, you are holy. Amen. That's why he refers to you as holy. Amen. Walk in that holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. It's interesting. It says, especially people, if you have identity crisis, you shouldn't have that anymore. God refers to you as special. Special. His own people. His precious people. Hallelujah. Amen. I wrote a song, or the Lord gave me a song many years ago. Uh, we are a precious... Okay, I'm singing. We are precious people. About, it's about this. A precious people. A royal priesthood. A chosen generation. Hallelujah. Then I, was, I had the privilege of leading a choir. This was more than 20 years ago. And yeah, we sang that. Hallelujah. But that is it. We should know that we are precious. It has nothing to do with what we may call as fact. I'm too short for my liking. I'm too tall for my liking. I'm overweight for my liking. I'm too skinny for my liking. I'm this and I'm that. Oh, I don't like this, my skin color. Oh, and the way my hair is and all that. All those things are trivial. For God, your creator, to say you are precious, what's your problem? The problem is this. Because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, we stop ourselves from walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority of the Spirit of God that is resident within us. Am I ministering to somebody? Because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, we stop short from walking in the very glory, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit that is resident within us. If you can't see yourself the way God sees you, you cannot exercise the faith that is in you. If you don't see yourself the way God sees you, you cannot even have faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. That faith will be there, but it's important. I'm going to say that again. That faith is present, but it's important. It's important to see ourselves the way God sees us. For instance, in one scripture it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. Amen. You are weak, but it says, I am strong. To you, naturally, you say, well, that doesn't make sense. And we will talk about some of these things tonight. God says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Then he says, well, I'm weak. And you want me to say, I'm strong. The fact is, I'm weak. The fact is, I'm sick. The fact is, I'm broke. The fact is, I don't have a job. The fact is, I'm not married. The fact is, I'm facing divorce. That's your reality. But that's not God's reality. Do you get it? In the natural, that seems to be your reality. But that's not God's reality. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I refresh your memory. And that's what you have to do. Let's go back to the people of Israel. When they got to the Red Sea, God promised them reality. I'm taking you out of uh, this land of Egypt. I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. Reality. He knew that uh, what is the name? Pharaoh was going to, uh, what do you call it, bring in their way, be, become a, a, a nuisance to them. He knew that because he said, I will harden his heart. You get what I'm saying? So all the things that he was going to throw their way, God was aware of it. That wasn't new to him. 
That's why he kept telling Moses, go back. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. When they got to the Red Sea, finally, he let them go. When they got to the Red Sea and they saw Pharaoh and his uh, army coming after them, that was what? Their reality in the natural. So he said, that is a fact. So they started crying. That said, it is over. We are going to die. But that is not God's reality. That is not God's reality. And today, I want, to ch- I want you to change what you call reality. If God doesn't call it reality, don't call it reality. It may be reality on the natural plane, on the human plane, but not according to God. And I'm saying this and I'm stressing it because this is one of the areas or one of the things that stops us from walking in the supernatural power. We go by what we see, the physical senses. Hallelujah. Let nothing stop you. So at times when we even budget, when we are going to do something, a project in the kingdom, we are going to, uh, God is telling us to advance, do this, do that. Then we look at, okay, you know where I am now. I don't even have a job. How can I do this? I don't even know anybody. How can I do this? What I, uh, what I make is not enough. How can I even do this? You know what I'm saying? This is going to cost so much. How can I do that? So, then we limit God by focusing on what we call our own reality. But look at what uh, God did with Moses. He was seeing, he was facing the rest. Of Yet, God told Moses, go forward. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Can we hold this? Uh, okay, we'll come back to this. Uh, First Peter 2. But let's go to Exodus chapter 14. This is a bonus. I want people to see it. Exodus 14. Let's look at uh, the 13th verse. Hallelujah. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them, you shall see again no more forever. Do you get it? <laughs> the reality of God is these Egyptians, they are what? Annihilated. Dead. So far as God is concerned, they don't even exist. That is God's reality. I'm sharing with you the wisdom and the understanding of God. That even though it's available to us and we can access it, we fail to access it. Hallelujah. And I want us to come into this. To begin to tap into that. And begin to use it. Amen. 14. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold what? Your peace. Isn't that nice? 15. Hallelujah to Jesus. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to do what? Go forward. God Go forward into the ocean. <laughs> Do you say, go forward? The ocean was right before them, the Red Sea. And he said, go forward. Go forward into the ocean. Are we not going to be drowning? Does it make sense? Your reality is, you are going to drown. And God's reality is, that, no, this is the day I am going to honor what? my word in your life. I'll be exalted, I'll be glorified in this situation. Amen. Come on now. That's God's reality. But to us, it's like, okay, that's it. Like they were crying. Let's read on. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Moses, lift up your rod and straight out your hand over the sea, the ocean, and divide it. And divide it. And divide it. 
I love it. God didn't say, lift up your hand, I'm going to divide the Red Sea. Moses, lift what you have, what you've got, what is in your possession. Not what you don't have. God always uses what you have. And faith is something that you always have. Because as your nose is part of your body, faith is resident within you all the time. Amen. It can be latent. It can be important. Meaning that it's there lying dormant. Not being used. You have to use it. He told Moses, lift up your rod. Whose rod? God's rod? No. Moses' rod. You have to exercise your faith in God. Your confidence in God. Your trust in His Word. You have to believe His Word. You have to go to work with His Word. You have to apply His Word. Hallelujah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. In every given situation, the way out is you applying the instruction that the Lord gives you. And normally, He doesn't speak magic. He speaks His Word. Because He's the way. Hallelujah. Amen. So you lift up your arm, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Amen. What am I trying to tell you tonight? Don't sit down anymore and say you are waiting for God. God is waiting on you. Amen. Ignorance of his word, of his instruction. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of wisdom on the part of the believer, then they say things like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm seeking the face of the Lord. No, don't get me wrong. There's a time and there's a place where we seek the face of the Lord. But most of the time, when we say we are seeking the face of the Lord and we are waiting on the Lord, it's because of our ignorance. Because of our ignorance, there's no understanding of the will of God. There's no wisdom. And I want us to get over that hump. We can get over that hump. It's not far away. We don't have to make a trip to where India. We don't have to make a trip. We are in the U.S. We don't have to make a trip to wherever, Australia, you know, or China to get this. It's resident within you. Amen. 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 You have the Holy Spirit. He knows the future. Amen. He will guide you into all truth. Amen. So you see what I'm saying? Amen. The Bible says it. He will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. So if truth is, is what will get you out, and uh, He is within you, you don't need to go to China. Hmm. Meaning that wherever you are, God is there. Hallelujah. And you have to tap into that wisdom. You have to tap into that understanding. And you will come out. You will change the situation. I've been saying this for years. God has his part. We have our part. Hallelujah. And one of the things, the mess in the body of Christ, that must be cleaned up and be cleaned up well. That must be what? Confronted and confronted very, very well concretely, is the fact that this is what we do. We are always playing God. We don't even know our part. And don't want to play God's part. How? We have to know our part. God will always come through with his part of responsibility. God will never falter in his responsibility. God will not shirk his duty. No way, Jose. It's not happening. God is true to his word. Hallelujah. Before he told Moses to lift up the rod, he's made the way in the sea already. The way was there. Moses was just to carry out the lifting up of the rod. Hallelujah. To just uncover the way that was already in the sea. And no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are facing, the way out is right resident within you. When we are going through things, this is what we do. We give up. We don't even give God the chance to do anything for us. We don't give him the chance to speak a word of what? Deliverance. A pathway to what? Our breakthrough. We don't give him the chance. We conclude. 
I've seen this before. Oh, so and so went through this, and this happened, and that happened. Oh, I know what is going on. Then all of a sudden, we go on this negative tangent. Very negative. We begin to think outside the word of God. We abandon Jesus, we put him aside. When I say, when I say we abandon Jesus, meaning that we put the word of God aside. We don't focus on the word anymore. Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. And then we reject him as the Lord of our lives. We take matters into our hands. And then we begin to figure things out, what we are going to do. The Holy Spirit resident within us. He's the one who will lead us and guide us into all truth. He's the one that will show us things to come. He's the one who will show us the way of God. Amen. He's the one. Yeah, it's right within us, not outside. We have to change some things. Amen. We have to unlearn some things. Yeah. We have to abandon some ways of ours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To me, this is simple. If you want out so badly, then you should be able to do whatever it takes to get out. Amen. But at times, you want out our way. Am I right? Yeah. That's the problem. Hallelujah. God was behind the scene. He wasn't at the forefront. He was behind the scene. Look at what was happening. Moses is agent. You are God's agent. You are his representative on this earth. He can't do much without us. You see, he can't change your own situation. No matter how you cry aloud. No matter how many days you fast. No matter how long you read the word. No matter how much you give. No matter how much, how long you worship. If you don't hear his word of instruction, directives to get out, and you not following it, the situation remains the same. He will not change it for you. Every situation that he changed in the word of God, there was man involved. There was man involved. He always told what the man should do. The man does it. We're talking about human beings just like you and I. They do it and they change their situation. Oh God, help me, help me. He said, I've sent you help already. Why are you crying to me? And it's so bad. Some people were even taught. Listen to this. They were taught in a situation, just say, Jesus, help me, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. That is shallow. That's what I'm talking about. And it's going on in churches. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. We are going to go to, um, okay, let's do the 17th verse, and I'll take you to Corinthians. Remind me, 17, verse 17 now. We'll go to, uh, after that, we'll go to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, what happened here? It says, I, I, I and I indeed, will harden the heart of the Egyptians and they shall follow and they shall follow them. So I will, I will what? Gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his, and his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Look at what is going on. God is aware of the situation. He has this way out. Why? Because he will be honored. He will be on it. Whatever power is coming against you, that is Pharaoh right there. Yes. Whatever you are against or is against you is before you, a mountain that you face. This is it. The Lord will gain honor over that. Amen. He's working with you. Amen. That's why Mark, um, what, Mark chapter 11, 22 says, Have faith in God. And 23 says, If you say to this mountain, be removed. Don't doubt in your heart. It shall happen. Amen. Do you get it? Yes. yes. So who says to that mountain, move? You. Me. Not God. 
And most of the time, people are praying, God, change my situation. God, change my situation. God, help me. God, help me. He said, I've helped you already. You have to do what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. That's the only way you see the manifestation. Let's read on. Let's see this beautiful thing that happened. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Uh, when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Let's read on. And I just wanted you to see how he's going to close this thing up beautifully. The way he allowed them. I saw God, his way is perfect. He allowed them, you know, to follow the Israelites. And I believe some of the Israelites, when they were going, they were looking back and said, wow, God, you said we are going to go through. The guys are coming. Look at them. They are closing in on us. But God was up to something. In the same way, God is up to something. It doesn't matter. And I don't care what you are facing. Whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, it's not bigger than God. No, no, it's too even, it's too much. It's not bigger than you. Amen. You are bigger than your problem. Amen. Hallelujah. And the angel of the Lord, the moment Moses lifted his rod, the angel of God, who was who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went what? From before them and stood behind them. Let's read on. Some people don't know it, so we are reading it. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's keep going. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israel, a camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave what? Light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. As for God, his way. It's perfect. Amen. Look at how he blocked them. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. You see, we see some of these things at times. You see, look at this. They saw the cloud. They couldn't see the what? The enemies anymore do. But that was the, the complete thing that God was doing. That was just a part of what he was doing. In the same way, we see parts. We see pieces. We see portions of what God is doing. But because we want the end, at times we don't take the time to celebrate these pieces Amen. Amen. and enjoy the moments of breakthroughs and deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As for God, His way is perfect. Amen. Let's read on. Then Moses stretched out his uh, hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back. Wow. By what? A strong east wind. All that night. Whilst these enemies were blocked. But he said, these enemies you see, you won't see them anymore. Meanwhile, he's blocked them. And he's, you know, he's now moving the waters. And made the sea into dry water, land. And the waters were divided. Now let's read on. What an amazing scenario. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea. I guess if I were there, now probably I know it's so only afraid, but if I didn't know what I know now, seeing this mighty ocean, it's like, what if this water is they decide to come back? <laughs> you know, that was that's what the mind will tell you. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. So they went in the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand. On the left. Isn't that something that is not recorded in scripture? I don't know whether they were afraid. Because they hadn't seen anything like this before. And that is one of the things that we will see. Amazing stuff. Where we are now. That is the time. We are going to see mind-boggling things take place in our lives. In the lives of others. But that's, that's why I keep saying we have to position ourselves. We have to know how to roll with God. We have to know how to move with the move of the Holy Spirit. We have to know how to follow His lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, look at this. Moses was following the lead of the Lord. 
The ones that do his own thing. Let's read on. Beautiful. And the Egyptians pursued. The enemy is stubborn. And you know why he, 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 at times he's stubborn? He has no wisdom. That equals the wisdom of God. And he has no understanding. That equals the understanding of God. Do you think if these Egyptians, they knew that God was leading them on <laughs> to get into the uh, the heart of the sea or the middle of the sea so he would drown them, you think they would have gone there? No way. I'm trying to tell you something. The devil is not that wise like you think. His wisdom is corrupt. He's not that wise. We will beat him all the time if we operate in the wisdom and the understanding of the Lord. All the time. But when you go with man's wisdom, Human wisdom, natural wisdom, mm -mm. Yeah. don't even think about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so the Egyptians pursued. They went into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses. If God says you won't see them anymore, he knew what he was talking about. All Pharaoh's horses. All. All. And God was patient. Watching them. You come. His chariots and his what? Housemen. Let's read on. 24. Now it came to pass in the morning, watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Let's read on. As for God, his will is perfect. And he took off their what? China wheels. Wow. This is beautiful. So that they drove them with difficulty. You see, in their strength, in their mind, their own power. They think, okay, we got it, we got it, we got them. This is it. They are stuck. And, but they knocked off their wheels. When we operate in, in, in what? Our own smartness. This is what happens. In the middle of when we think we are winning, then we realize that, uh-uh. It's not working. And we get frustrated. Let's not do that. He chooses the weak things of this world to what? Confound. To break down the mighty. Hallelujah. Alright, so let us and the Egyptians said, let us what? Flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Wow. You see? Your enemy <laughs> will realize that, hey, you are not what? By yourself. The creator is with you. And he cannot fight you. He cannot resist you anymore. He will leave you alone. Let's read on. Since we started, I just want us to end it. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea. That the waters may walk, come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots, on their horsemen. You see, at times he said this, but God, you saw, he said he looked down. He knocked their wheels off. God, you started to complete it, kill them, finish them. God always has his part, and we always have what? Our part. So he moved, and then after he moved, he said, Moses, now stretch out what? Your hand. That is your responsibility. Do you get the picture? All right. And then he said what is going to happen. Let's read on. 27. And Moses stretched out his hand. So he obeyed. This is what we call faith. God says something. God is the source. God instructed. He did it. That is what we call walking in faith. Living by faith. This is what we call belief in God. This is what we call confidence in God and trust in His Word. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. Oh my goodness. This wow. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it, so the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Wow. Wow. 
I want you to see this. Look at this picture. In the book of Isaiah 54, 17, the Bible says, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. And I want to tell you, the fact that we have a covenant with the Lord, that doesn't mean that we are not going to face oppositions or things. It says, No weapon that is fashioned. It means that the, the weapons will be fashioned. The enemy will try to come against us. But this is the truth, God's reality. We will always be victorious. Period. Because when you read Isaiah 54, 17, I'm talking about, because it says, This is our heritage, because our righteousness is from the Lord. Winning is part of what? Our heritage. Being victorious over the enemy, his words, his attacks, is our heritage. Hallelujah. For those who haven't said it, we'll come back to Exodus uh, what, 14, then verse 28. But let's go to Isaiah 54, 17. So you see it for yourself. I love it. These are scriptures that you don't let go. You see, you should know them like you know the back of your hand. No weapon formed against, so you can put your name there. Me shall prosper. Amen. And every tongue that which rise against me in judgment, I shall condemn. Amen. Today I hear people at times pray and say, the Lord rebuke you. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that's wrong prayer. You rebuke the, the enemy. Don't say the Lord rebuke you. And then they quote the scripture like, and yeah, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And in Jude, when this guy was like, let me do that, I don't want to digress. <laughs> Ignorance, when I, when I see it, it gets on my nerves. Okay, so he comes up. It says, This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. No weapon fashioned or formed against me shall prosper. I rest my case. I walk in this consciousness. I walk in this awareness. I'm not afraid when I see a move against me. No. I'm not scared when I see something going, you know, the wrong way that, you know, you shouldn't be worried about it. You shouldn't be shaking. Hallelujah. Because you know that you are following the lead of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then he says, and their righteousness is for me. That is powerful. You see, we have a right standing before God. He has a covenant with us. Amen. So God does whatever he does for us. Not because of our own works. Not because we are good. Not because we are smart. Not because people say, oh, you are a beautiful lady. Or you are a handsome guy. Not because of that. Oh, you have this degree and have that degree. Not because of that. Oh, I saw you are such a good person. Not because of that. He does what he does for us. Coming from this place of righteousness. Hallelujah. Heritage. Inheritance. You see, if you know some of these things, you will walk around anywhere, you will not be afraid. You can read it, but have you accepted it? Are you leaning on it? Are you relying on it? So let's go back to our, uh, what do you call it, Exodus uh, 24, 28. 14, I'm sorry, 14, 28. Then the waters, when Moses lifted his rod again, then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the uh, horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. Not so much as one of them remained. Amazing. Let's, let's end it, 29. God fulfilled his word. Hallelujah. Amen. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. 30. They walked through. They were safe. Nothing happened to them. So the Lord saved them. I wanted people to see that, to hear that. So the Lord saved Israel. The Lord saved. He saved them because he cut a covenant with Abraham in the book of Genesis. And he said, your descendants will be in a land that is not theirs. 
for centuries. They will suffer, but I will deliver them. And they will come up with great substance. That's the word of the Lord. And he kept his word. Hallelujah. In the same way, the word saved or saved is important to us. We are also dealing with salvation. And that's not what I want to talk about. I've gone a long way, but that's fine. This is good stuff. We are dealing with the word, that same word, saved. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have all everlasting life. Amen. Saved. That's what it is. Amen. Eternal life. Amen. That includes what? Protection. Preservation. Protection. Preservation. From the enemy, that which can harm you, and what have you, the works of the enemy, works of darkness, you know, what, what have you? Wickedness, unrighteousness. You have preservation. Hallelujah. Amen. Saved. Amen. And you are saved. That's why God is your protector. He's your protection. He's your shield. He's your defense and your defender. Hallelujah. Amen. He's an adversary to your adversaries. He's an enemy to your enemies. The blood has sealed you. The Holy Spirit has sealed you. You are covered. Hallelujah. I want to say something here. Look, it doesn't matter. Those who preach some of these things and say that, and they've taken your name somewhere, and they've mentioned your name somewhere. Don't believe those things. If you believe that they're taking your name somewhere, so whatever they are doing is working against you, it will work against you. But I want you to believe the word of the Lord. Let every man be a liar. Let God be what? True. Amen. Don't believe my word over God's word. In the same way, don't believe anybody's word over God's word. Amen. Don't. Take God's word. Amen. I say this to you. To me, nobody can curse me. The moment you begin to curse, you yourself, you fall in that curse. But me, I'm coming. No curse can come to me. Amen. It cannot come near my door. Because I'm blessed. Amen. And I cannot be cursed. Amen. The one who blessed me. Oh, look. Get this. Get this and get it well. The one who blessed me is God. When we talk about blessing, it's not because you had a car. Then you say you are blessed. Material stuff, then you are blessed. Blessing is what God has pronounced upon us. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. He took us from the kingdom of darkness. We were reading. In whatever. Now let's go back to uh, the first Peter 2 that we're reading. Uh, we're at uh, uh, 9. Now we're going to be reading 10. You see, we are blessed. First Peter 2 10. We are blessed. That's what I'm talking about. He pronounced blessing upon Abraham. He said, I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. I am blessed and no man can curse me. The one who can curse me will have to be what? Higher than God who blessed me. I'm going to say that again. I cannot be cursed because in God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And any human being. That this, this God I'm talking about. He's above every principality, power, authority, thrones, dominions, and what have you. He has blessed me. Every power, authority is under his feet. He has blessed me. For anybody to succeed in cursing me, they have to be higher than him. But there's nobody higher than my God. That applies to every believer. But if you don't know it, you walk around and they say, oh, this person is doing this and doing this. That's why I don't care who. You know, I don't give any attention to whoever is doing what against me. Do it. Go ahead. Do it. You are wasting your time. Because no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. No man can take me down. I mean, this, look. I don't know how. I wish I can speak in tongues, Carlos, so you get it. <laughs> That's simple. But people believe otherwise and they run into problems. You take my name anyway. I can give you my social security <laughs> number. <laughs> take me anywhere. You will succeed. Hallelujah. I mean, that's, we are laughing about that, but that's how serious it is. Nobody can harm you. 
nobody can harm you. They may disappoint you here and there. That's all that they can do. They'll drop the ball here and there. That's all they can do. But whatever you set your heart to do, and whatever God wants you to do, you will accomplish it. Amen. Amen. You will succeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, sorry. Let's look at the nine. The first uh, Peter 2, 9. Because we didn't finish it. We're talking about God's chosen, chosen generation, royal priesthood, and holy nation. Special people. So identity is... You see, when you know this, this is good stuff. You can't go wrong with this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when you know this, it doesn't matter how they say dangerous some prophet or pro apostle is in town or whatever. You won't go. You won't go. Amen. Now people are running after they said so and so. He said, I just want to go there so he will, he will, he will what? lay hands on me so he will part. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days oh, of my life. You don't go for such things. Show me in the Bible where people are running, chasing men. So they will lay hands on them, so they will have invitation. That's the nonsense that is going on now. Because people don't know what they have. Of course, Paul said, I'm looking forward to the day I'm going to come so I may impart some scripture gifts. But we take it out of contest. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priest, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. For what? Just to sit down and enjoy the light? No. Who once, <laughs> who once were not a people, but now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now obtained what? Mercy. Hallelujah. That's why I love that song. We are the people of God. I love it. Such songs we should be singing. Hallelujah. So it's called you out of darkness. He wants you to proclaim what? His praises. He wants you to proclaim his praises. But if you focus on your situation, how do you sing his praises? How do you portray his praises? If you're not getting out, overcoming the home. The mess, the situation, whatever. How do you portray his glory? Let me go to Colossians and probably Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Hallelujah to Jesus. Colossians 1 9. For this reason, we also, since Paul speaking, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So what I've shared with you so far to this point, I have revealed to you a part, a fraction, a portion of the will of God concerning your life. Do you get it? It's there in the Bible. So I just expose you to that. And I explain that to you. You got what I'm saying? Now it's your duty to take it, to hold it. To live in it. To live like that. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says something so strong in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It says, um, don't, don't look at the things that are seen. Don't look at the things that are seen. Even though the Bible... If I let's go there, we'll come back to this. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We are looking at uh, the 18th verse. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read, when you hear, it's good. But when you both hear and see, that's the plus. Mm -hmm. So Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 is going to be on the screen shortly. Hallelujah. Amen. And bam! There you go. Not yet. Is it cold affecting it? Hallelujah to Jesus. So you see, what we are going through, this is what we do. We, we keep focusing on the situation. We keep looking. The instruction is, don't look at the things that are saying. You understand what I'm saying? 
But that's not what we do. Hallelujah. We are waiting 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Why would you not look what? Are the things which are what? The things that are seen, those are the things that we call our reality. But that's not God's reality. Do you get it? The things we see we call our reality. But that's not God's reality. And I want us to change the way we think when it comes to these things. Hallelujah. Why would you not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen? But the things which are not what? Seen. When God told them, Moses and that, you know, tell these ones that what? The Egyptians I see today, you see them no more. In reality, naturally, they were still standing there. They could see them. But like I said, in the mind of God, they were non existent. Amen. Amen. That's how you have to see your challenges. It's like I'm seeing it, but this challenge. David said, this Goliath, <laughs> I'm going to chop off your head. Yeah. Yes. And he was excited. Oh, and he said, it's going to be chopped off. I'm going to feed you to the birds. <laughs> Meanwhile, other people that are seeing themselves dead, their knees were shaking. They, they need their catches. You know, the church, how we have catches, people falling. It's all about where you live. Yeah. Where you live. Where you live. Where you live. Where you live. Mindset. Yeah. And if you don't have the word of God in you, you can't have that mindset like David. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So don't look at the things that you see. I'm not saying be in denial. Let faith rise up within you and defy your situation. Hallelujah. It's real. You may say the natural. I'm facing this. I don't have a job. This bill must be taken care of. Whatever, whatever. But shift into God's reality. That's where we live. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back. The things that I see are what? Temporary. Right? The things that I see are temporary. Meaning that they are subject to change. And they are going to change. I'm not going to give all my attention to it. It's going to change. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the uh, first Peter that we read. Uh, sorry, Colossians chapter 1 and 9. For this reason also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So this is what I was telling, talking to you about. You see, when you have wisdom, and when you have understanding, you see, wisdom can be spiritual or worldly. I want you to know that. Wisdom can be spiritual or worldly. It can be higher or lower wisdom. But when we talk about wisdom, that is from above, we are talking about divine, godly wisdom. Not natural or human wisdom. And when you go to James chapter 13, I don't have time, but if we have time, I'll go there to show you. Then you see the difference in what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. And in verse 10, you see, he says you have to have, you have to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Like we have said. Knowledge of God's will. Knowledge of God's will. Knowledge of his will. When we say will, I always want to bring it down as when somebody dies and leaves uh, an estate and your name is involved in it or something, is it bequeath? You are managing the right way? Lawyer? Bequeath? Yes. Okay. Yes. Something is given to you. Something is yours. You didn't work for it. The person who was about to exit from this world says, I'm leaving this for you. You don't have to pay for it. So the person exits. And then an attorney comes in, they read the will. Will, I'm talking about the same thing here. And then you get to know that this is yours. 
If the attorney does not read it for you, you never know that there's something there for you. But he comes to read it. That is why every will that is made is kept in the custody of an attorney. And he has instructions when to release it. In the same way, we are dealing with the will of God. Kept safely. Hallelujah. Till the death, resurrection. And the sitting, ascension, the sitting of Jesus Christ on the right hand of God. And now here we have the will. What he died for, us to have. So that's why I say study the Bible, read it. If you don't read it, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. It's all yours. You see, that's what I'm saying that who receives a will? He has money in the bank. They say, oh, I'm going to pay or they leave him a car. And they say, oh, I, I have, uh, you know, I've saved $5,600 in my, what do you call it, uh, what do you call it, savings account. I'm going to pay for it. Come on now, who does that? And that's what the church, some people are doing. They are paying for something that is already paid for. They are working hard to get something that is already given to them as a gift, as an inheritance. Ignorance is creating that problem. Ignorance. And it's so sad. Just this afternoon, I was talking to one of the members of this house. And this came up that I just can't get it. That like Philippians, one of the men were reading the book of Philippians. It has just four chapters. And I can't get over it. That was the four chapters. Am I right? Is it four chapters or six chapters? Are you sure? Okay. You know, most of you say that, oh, your pastor doesn't know how many you know, chapters he in the uh, book of Philippians. You read it, so you know. You see now, I like that. I read it. We read it. We know it's for. If you haven't read it, it's like, mm, you'll be looking at me, staring at me. I don't know if it's four or six or it's even ten. You see the problem? But reading it, they confidently said, I read it. It's for. And people didn't have time. Some people didn't have time. The whole of that particular specific month to read these four chapters. Then ask yourself this question. What is going on? What is dear to people? What is more important than God? Or the fellowship with God? People are trying to do life by their own strength. That is why they are struggling. It's true. That is why they are struggling. Amen. Life, eternal life, God's kind of life, there's no struggle in it. We have to come into understanding, have knowledge of His will in wisdom and understanding. So when we talk about understanding here, this wisdom and understanding, look at verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, Increase in the knowledge of God. You'll be strengthened with, with all might, according to His glorious power, for all patience, long suffering with joy, giving thanks. You'll be cranky. When you get to this place, you'll be cranky. At times I say, people cry because they don't know their God. I don't mean to belittle their experiences. I don't mean to belittle their pain or whatever they are going through. But when you know God, some people who cry, they won't cry the way they, could, they do. They'll be excited. I'm telling you. You see a problem and you're rather excited. <laughs> that is what? No, no, mom. We, can, we are super natural. That's the life that God has given to us. And we have to come to terms with that. Hallelujah. But let me, let, me, let me talk to you about this, um, this understanding thing, and then I'll just end there. The understanding that is used there, it means this. It means intelligence, or concretely, the intellect, mindset, knowledge. Hallelujah. Look at the combination, wisdom and spiritual. To qualify it, it's saying, so 
We have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. So spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding. Sophia and Sonesis. Wisdom is Sophia. So when you hear people being called Sophia, Sophia, talking about wisdom. It can be spiritual, it can be worldly. Synesis, understanding. We're talking about a certain mindset. So, intelligence. You read the word, you understand the word, you take it, you embrace it. That becomes the way you live. That becomes your values. That becomes what? Uh, what do you call it? Your belief system. That's, you see, intelligence, God's reality. Intelligence, this is what we are talking about, that understanding God's reality. It may seem like, oh, I'm about to go down. I'm not going down. This is my time of exaltation. That's it. Look, this is how simple it is. It looks like this sickness. Oh, I have these plans. I have these plans. Those plans. I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do that. And all of a sudden, look at what is happening to my health. And if, will I be able to do this? That wrong question. You are more than a conqueror. You are overcoming. Whatever the sickness is, whatever the health challenge is, you have already overcome. Because in your inheritance, in your heritage, he gave you health and he gave you healing. No sickness. You get it? You have to be strong about this. You have to get rid of fear. I'll close by reading first, first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2. And I mean, I will not be able to break it down because of time. But it says something powerful. Hallelujah. There's so much that about wisdom, but I can't talk about it all. It says in verse 2, 2 Corinthians 2, 2. That's a powerful way to, to stop this. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Do you get it? You see, we want to know about everything. There are certain questions when you ask me, I have no clue what you are even talking about. But I'm not saying don't do those things. Probably you are into sports. That's fine. You are learning and watching and moving and following all these things and all that. Fine. You know about when you talk about uh, the way of defense and then you talk about whatever, whatever. Uh, all those, some of those things, you see, I don't know. I'm not into football. I realize that my 24, 24 hours is not enough for me. So I focus on what I think I have to focus on. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't follow these things. I'm not saying don't have entertainment. I'm not saying don't have leisure or pleasure. No. We have to be balanced. Okay? But what I'm saying is, don't lean on these things and then you don't give attention to spiritual stuff. You get what I'm saying? Give time to spiritual stuff too. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. So let's read on. So serve Jesus Christ Lord and Him crucified. Then I, I was with you in weakness and in fear. For and my speech, my message, and my preaching were very plain. Not with what persuasive. Not with what persuasive. Old King James says enticing, but uh, this is right. Persuasive words of what wisdom. So here we are talking about what natural wisdom. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about natural wisdom. We are talking about the way we do life, you know, apart from God. But in demonstration of the word, spirit, and of power, that your faith, that your faith, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. One of the reasons, and I'll say this is major, why we are stuck, some people, children of God, are stuck, is because their faith is in the wisdom of men instead of in the power of God. Whatever man says, that's what they go with. That's what they say. Even so and so says, and it's so amazing. At times you hear people say, my pastor said, my pastor said, my pastor said, my pastor said, oh, you mean my pastor said, and this prophet told me, and the prophet said, and the prophet, so what? Go to the Bible now. 
quote the Bible, refer to the word of God. Now what your pastor is saying, for all this while your pastor has been wrong. And because you are not reading your word, you didn't even know. All this while this apostle or prophet is speaking what? Doom and judgment and condemnation to you. You didn't know because you don't read the word. You don't know what you have in Christ Jesus. It's your responsibility to find out. And we are now, we are chasing prophets to do what God expects us to do. And no wonder they are living large and they are making money from ignorant people. Even though they are sincere. That's so sad. Your faith should not be the wisdom of man. Your faith should be the power of God. The scriptures. Hallelujah. And then it says, How we speak the wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, not the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom. See how it's talking about wisdom? We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. The hidden, which the hidden, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And this is what I want to close with. Eight. Which none of the rulers of his age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. That is why on the cross, Jesus in Luke 20, uh, 20, 23, 34, he said, Lord, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. Ignorance makes you do some things. You fight your own breakthrough. You stand in the way of your own manifestation of what God has for you. And you are fighting yourself and you don't even know. And the devil gets a kick out of that. Because that's where he wants you to be. Ignorant. If they had known, they wouldn't have crucified. That's why Colossians 1 9. It's talking about you have to be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all what? Wisdom and spiritual understanding. Intelligence. It should be a mindset. Know what somebody is saying. If what they are saying doesn't line up with God's word, don't take it. It doesn't matter how popular they are. Don't take it. Because I've seen some popular people doing some foolish things. Now, I don't want to say some of those things, but that will take my time. But some of the things that some popular people are doing they are not scriptural. It's not. But it's popular. So people are following through. Now almost every meeting, uh, some ministers are asking for what? Come with the oil. Come with the bottle of oil. We'll bless it. What? Is that what it's come to? We can't believe the word and release the word. The power that we can release into the oil. Can't we release the word over the people? Why are we not training the people? And we are causing the people to rely on us. Always to come to us. Always to come to us. That's what it's set up to do. That's a setup. And I kick against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We won't stay. We refuse to stay in, in, in ignorance. Hallelujah. That is so wrong. That is so wrong. We are ripping the people of God off. We are ripping them off big time. Hallelujah. Now I know this note because where I'm going to now, <laughs> I will begin to say some, begin to say some things. But if they had known that it was the Lord Jesus Christ saving them from their bondage, they wouldn't have crucified him. There was no wisdom, there was no understanding, no intelligence, no God's kind of reality. That that's it. Thank you, viewers. Amen. Hallelujah.